What's going on engineers? In this video we're going to be looking at SQL joins, specifically the left join, right join, and inner join. Now this video, like previous videos in this series, is just general SQL joins. It's not specific to any platform, that's because each platform is going to implement joins and they're likely going to implement it in the same way and with the same names. However, each platform may have some additional joins that have additional names, things like cross joins or outer joins. But the ones we're going to talk about today are just the left, right, and inner. I know joins are kind of a confusing topic to people. I get a lot of questions about it, but I think if you watch this video to the end, you'll find that it's not super hard. It just takes the right explanation. Before we jump in, just know I'm going to break this up into two parts. The first part is going to be about why joins need to exist. So I'll show you a couple tables and some sample data to kind of get it in your head on practically why joins need to exist. The second part of the video will be on the actual usage of joins and how they work. So let's jump into the first part. It's worth stating first exactly what a join is. A join is essentially when you have a single table that has some data in it, and you have a second table which has some related data in it, and you put them together as if they're one table, and then you join each row on a common field that is present in both tables. Joins become necessary because you can't always store all data in one table, and I have a classic example for that here. I have two tables here. I have one called posts, and I have one called comments. And you can think of this table, these two tables as being part of maybe an application called like blog. So our post table contains three pieces of data. It contains a post ID, which is our primary key, and it contains a title and content. And then for the comments table, I have comment ID, which is a primary key, but then I have this post ID. And post ID is something that we call a foreign key. And a foreign key is nothing more than a field in a table which relates to a private key in another table, in this case, posts. And because these two fields relate to one another, this is actually how we would perform the join. We would start by a record in posts, we'll say it's post ID 1. And then what it could do is it would take that record and then it would look inside comments and it would find any comments that had post ID of one. If it found one or more, it would take all of them and put them right next to that record and show that as if it were one row. Speaking in terms of relationship, we would sometimes call this a has many relationship or a one to many relationship in that posts has many comments or posts has one or more comments. But the relationships also go the opposite way. The relationship that post has to comments is a has many. The relationship that comments has to post is what's called a belongs to. And we say belongs to because a comment can only belong to one post. And that's why it only has one post ID. Before we start performing joins, I want to actually give you an overview of the data that I put into our sample tables. Basically what I did in, is I inserted four records into post, post one, two, three, and four. And then I inserted four comments into post one, two comments into post two, and then three comments into post three. And then I didn't insert anything into post four. And you'll see why I did that later. And I did this to further represent the relationships in that post one has four comments, post two has two comments, post three has three comments, and post four has zero comments. And we could just quickly come over here and we can select that data. Select all from posts. Select all from comments. So let's move on to actually performing some join operations. We'll start by doing a left join. A left join is what you're going to do when you want to have all of the data from table A, but only the data from table B where there's an actual match on the join condition. Left join is the most common and left join for our use case is going to be good for getting all of our posts and then all of our comments for each post. So join start up by just selecting all of the data from the table. So select all from posts. You know how to do that from previous videos. The next thing you write is a left join, and then you specify the table that you want to join onto posts. So in this case, comments. And then finally, you specify how you want to join these using the on keyword. So if we come back to our tables here, we can see that we're going to join these on post ID. So for every time we see post ID one, we want to drag all the comments that have post ID one up onto this row, and then do the same for two and three. So to accomplish this, we're simply going to do on posts dot post ID equals comment dot post ID. So let's just select all from posts and see what happens. So if we select all from posts, we can see that we just get posts. If we do the actual join query, you can see that we get the same data almost, but we also get all of the comments. Because we now have a data set that contains both the data from our post table as well as our comments table, we can then pull this into our application and then deduplicate it into something like an array of posts with each post containing an array of comments. 
And we were able to do all that with one query. And that brings me to my next point is you might be thinking to yourself, well, why don't I just make a query for all the posts? And then for each post, I make a query for all the comments. The reason that's not the right way to do it is because that's called the n plus one problem. And n plus one gets its name from this idea that you have to make one query for all the posts, that's the plus one, then you have to make n queries for each post, and that's gonna be the n. So if you had 100 posts that you need to query, you'd end up doing 101 queries. So that does not scale well. Before we move on to inner join, I wanna talk about these null values. And the reason these are nulls, because remember when I said, when I inserted the data, I said that I didn't insert anything for post four, and that's because I wanted to show you that with a left join, you'll still get the post four information. However, it's going to be null for the comment stuff because there are no comments under that post. So that brings us to inner join. Inner join is the exact same syntax as a left join, except instead of left, you write inner. Inner join is kind of like a left join, except with an inner join, it's not going to return the rows from table A if there's not at least one matching row from table B. So any idea what's going to happen when I run this? Well, if you guess it's going to return me the same data set except for post 4, then you'd be right. Well, inner join is not super useful for our use case here. It is useful for other use cases. Imagine a table setup where you have one table that has something like sporting events, and then you have another table that tracks registered participants for those events. So by using an inner join, you'd be able to select all the sporting events that have at least one participant. And you could do that by doing events, inner join, participant. And then finally, the last one is right join. And right join is a lot like a left join, except it's opposite. So for a right join, it's going to return all of the rows from comments, but only matching posts. Because our data set contains a post that doesn't have any matching comments, this particular query is going to render the exact same thing as the inner join. It's worth mentioning that any query operation such as order by, where, limit, group, and so on that you would apply to a normal select statement, you can also apply to this statement that contains a join, and you can do so on the resulting data. So if you wanted to just get one post with all the comments, you could simply tack on a where post.postid equals one. And then if I were to run this, you can see that I should get four records, just post one, but all four of the comments. If I then wanted to sort it by say, like newest comment at the top, then I could tack on an additional thing here, order by comments.commentID descending. And what this will give me is the same data set, but it will order it by comment ID 4321. And that's really all there is to joins. They aren't actually super hard to do. Sometimes they do can get confusing when you join, say, multiple tables in one query, which you can do. You can join 10 tables in one query if you want. Of course, you would have to make sense and make use of that data at the end, but it certainly is possible. But it's definitely a very powerful feature, and it's one that you're going to use the larger your application gets and the more complex your queries get, you're going to end up using a lot of joins and you're going to have to know how to do this stuff. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video, make sure you put them below into the comments. And other than that, I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.